So when we ended the last demo, we had moved our vector line work into Photoshop. I opened up a new Photoshop file so that it came in as a smart object. And I made that new Photoshop file quite large, 18 by 24 inches poster size at 350 pixels per inch. Then I was able to select with the magic wand even though I locked my smart layer just to make sure it's super safe, I could select with the magic wand with contiguous turned on and a default tolerance of 32 individual areas that are closed in by outline. But you see some of them are open. So this area is open right there which floods out to here all the way around and into there. So how do I close up the outline without changing my, my vector line work so that I can fill areas more cleanly? Because if I can select them cleanly, then I can fill them underneath with a flat color. And that just gets me started. So that's the first step. So basically, we've gone through these first three steps so far for this project. We sketched our idea. We created clean line work and created it into a, made it into a vector, whether that was through inking by hand, scanning, and live tracing, or whether that was by using blob brush and illustrator, or by inking in Photoshop and trying to clean it up, whatever way we got our black clean outline. We keep that as a separate layer, and now we're putting what's called flat local color behind it. And local color is the color something is. So a lemon is yellow. Doesn't matter what kind of lighting is there. So when I'm choosing local flat colors, I'm thinking, okay, what is the color the water is, despite its lighting, for this whole shape, for this whole shape, for this whole shape. And what's nice about once you pick kind of flats is then they're very easy to change. So I, I threw that pink in there, but if I wanted to change that to something else, like to another blue, it's very easy to select and change. All right, but how did I select this if, like we saw at the end of the last video, it wouldn't let me just click on my um, vector line work in here without also selecting outside, and that's because there are gaps. There's that little gap there that's letting the selection spill out to the, the outside and then in. So this is my solution. I made a duplicate, Command J, of my vector line work, and I rasterized that duplicate. To rasterize, you right click on the name, you say rasterize. And then, just to show that this is not what I ever want to keep, to show me that this is just for selecting areas to color, I went ahead and double clicked it and gave it a layer style effect of a color overlay, you know, of something really noticeable. So of that kind of hot pink, that magenta. So then, because it's rasterized, I went in and I closed those gaps. I closed the gap right there, just with the paintbrush, and I closed the gap right there. What that allows me to do is now use this file to select a shape that otherwise would spill over. Simple enough. So then I go to my flat color layer, and I can change the color of this shape. So I picked that, that tone. I think that works fine. Because I closed it up here as well, I can also pick this shape now, and it won't spill out into the background. So that's one way you can do it. What's another way you can do it? Well, you don't always need to, to click and use the magic wand to fill. You could also just stay on your flat color layer, and you can simply use your paintbrush. So let me deselect, let me turn off my, my temporary color layer there. And if I just use the paintbrush, and I set it to be 100% hardness, I want it to be a sensitive to size, so pressure sensitive, and not too, too large but large enough to cover something. 
then I can always just paint directly behind my line work. But the problem there is I might accidentally go beyond my line work. Right. So usually I'll do one pass, which is just filling in as much as I can with these different selection areas. So which ones have I not done? Remember, white has to be a color you choose. So I'm going to make my background. It's a flat white background, but I'm going to make a duplicate of it and then fill that with middle gray, which is in a lot of ways the most helpful. And then make another duplicate of it and fill that with, with black, 100% black. Because this, just like a logo, a spot illustration should work on a variety of backgrounds. I might even decide that to work on the black, I'm pretty sure I want to unlock my vector line work and add a stroke, an offset, on the outside to help it show up. But different than your logo, this stroke will go around everything, right? Because your, your line work can be pretty complicated. So that's a, a pretty extreme choice that will affect your coloring. But in this case, it works pretty well because water is kind of reflective. So that's something I might turn on. Right. Let's make it a little bit thinner so it's a little bit more subtle. And because we're doing it at such a high resolution, we can keep it subtle and it will still work well. All right, so that's on our vector. I'm going to lock it back up. It's still a smart layer. So what areas do I still need to fill in with the flat local color using the magic wand? All these little holes, right? So I'm going to go to my vector. I'm going to pick the areas inside. I'm going to turn off this effect <laughs> so it's easier to see. And I'm going to hold down Shift so it adds to it. So it's going to select all the remaining pieces that I don't want the background showing through. All right, and then maybe some others if I want to change the color. Now notice how here where I filled it in using that kind of painting I did, that's not as clean as the other flat colors behind. And that's because if you can select the space around the vector, that will give you the cleanest shape, even cleaner than painting it by hand. But ultimately, if it runs behind line work, it doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to go to my flat color layer, and I'm actually going to choose white as a color. And if that makes you nervous, you can always make it a slightly off-white. So I'm going to make it a slightly yellowish white. And then I'm just going to use my paint bucket, drop it in, in all those areas. And this makes it easy to select and change later. All right. So now I think I've got all the, the background colors. I have a flat color layer for all of them. Now this is what's great about being able to change it, and I'll be right there, Terry, is I can just at any time use my magic wand and uncheck contiguous and select all of that kind of cream colored white and change its color right away. Let's just make it pure white. but it's through painting, not through erasing. So it's very helpful. If I want to adjust all of these colors, I can just go to Image Adjustment and Levels, and I can adjust all of them a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. I can give them a less saturation. Right. 
And that's just flat color, very straightforward. Right, so now I have what are called flats. I have one layer that's flat local color. And if I want to clean up some of those edges, some of those flats, makes them easy to select. I can do that in a few different ways. I'm going to clean this one up by using the ellipse tool, transforming it. Whoops. <laughs> a good way. Here, I'll just do it. I'll use our vector knowledge. So I'll use the pen tool just to get this to be cleaner. I'm going to create an arc here. Then I'm going to go to the outside of it and connect it all the way. And then I can right click on my, my pen path <laughs> that I created in Illustrator and turn that into a selection path with zero radius. It will be pretty clean, and then I can delete to make that nice and clean. Right. Or if I wanted to, let me show you another way I can do that. If I wanted to extend it, and I wanted to use what I know about vectors, I can make it nice and clean this way. By extending the path, right-clicking on it, making it a selection. Oh, it's going to mess me up right there, though. But I'll fix that. And then using my paintbrush, holding down Option, stealing the color I used here, because Option changes it to the eyedropper tool, and painting that in at 100%. And that will kind of clean it up. But it can be hard to know where to stop the color. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. Okay, so once you have flats, then you can start adjusting it. So what I like to do is I like to take my flats and duplicate them. And then I play with the duplicate. I go to image adjustment, and I'm going to play first with color balance. Shifting the colors. Starting with the midtones left to right. And this will get me slightly more complex colors than just the, the default swatches as base colors. And you're just kind of recognizing what you like and what you don't like. Lastly, the shadows. Colors chosen in the computer are different than, than colors from a, a scan or a photograph. They're all the same pixel. There's no variation. So I started with that. Now I have this. I like this a little bit more. It's a little bit more moderated. And then there's some areas I'm not sure if I like the colors I chose, um, but I understand why I chose them, right? So at any time, I can go into my flat color and I can just use the magic wand, have contiguous checked, just so it only selects that flat color. And I can hold down Option with the paint bucket and steal another color, whether it's white to drop in. I think I might want to make this white. And I might want to make this the light blue. And then I see that, and I think, no, I don't like that. I'm going to turn it back. So there's lots and lots of variations. I might want to make this little shape here, the light blue instead of the white. Hold down Option, steal the light blue, put it in. And maybe I want to make this the light blue instead of the white. 